Hello to all of you, my organic farming enthusiasts, and welcome back to yet another video here on our tiny garden, where we are always dedicated to the science and the art of organic farming. With this video, we begin a brand new series, one of my favorite topics to talk about, and that is the biological control of pests and diseases. Just before we get into the first pest of this series, which is now Tuta Absoluta, it's very important for us to understand some terms on biological control and also understand how it works. Biological control is a method of managing pests and diseases using other living organisms. We can use predators, parasites or pathogens to suppress or reduce the populations of the target organisms. Now, one of the benefits of biological control include that it's environmentally friendly. It often minimizes the use of chemical pesticides and reduces harm to non-target species. It also preserves biodiversity and can be very cost effective and it is also sustainable in the long term. Let us now briefly look at how biological control works. Biological control operates through various mechanisms, primarily involving predators, parasitoids, pathogens, biopesticides, natural enemies, conservation of natural enemies, and also augmentation. So just briefly to look at predators and parasitoids. These ones directly consume or parasitize pest species, therefore reducing their populations. And an example here is the ladybugs that we have, which will prey on amphids and other common pests in many crops. We also have pathogens. And for pathogens such as bacteria, viruses, and fungi, infect and they kill the pests. And an example here is Bacillus thuringiensis, or commonly known as Bt, which is a bacterium that is used to control caterpillar pests. We have biopesticides that are derived from natural materials like plants and microorganisms. These ones target pests specifically and spare beneficial organisms. We also have natural enemies that encompass a wide range of organisms, which includes predators, parasitoids and pathogens, which naturally regulate pest populations. Conservation of natural enemies involves enhancing habitats to support populations of beneficial organisms, while argumentation involves releasing additional individuals of these organisms to enhance their impact on pest control. So altogether, these methods that we have mentioned provide effective, sustainable alternatives to chemical pesticides, therefore promoting ecological balance and reduces environmental impact. On to the first pest of this series, and that is Tuta Absoluta. Now, if you're a tomato farmer, you really need to listen to this. Tuta Absoluta is commonly known as the tomato leaf miner or South American tomato moth, which firstly originated from South America and has become a significant threat to tomato farmers worldwide. Economic losses incurred by tomato farmers due to this pest are very substantial, with estimates reaching billions of dollars annually. The life cycle of Tuta Absoluta consists of four main stages. We have the egg, the larvae, the pupa and the adult. However, it is the larval stage that is particularly destructive as the larvae feeds voraciously on tomato plants, causing extensive damage to leaves, stems and fruits. This feeding behavior results in reduced yields and the quality of tomato crops. Therefore, this makes effective management strategies very crucial for minimizing agricultural losses. Briefly looking at the morphology of Tuta absoluta adult, the adult moths are relatively small with a wingspan of about 7 to 9 millimeters. They have a distinctive appearance that is characterized by a brownish gray coloration with white and yellow markings on its wings. The forewings are narrow and elongated while the hind wings are broader and slightly rounded. The body is slender and the antenna are long and thread-like. So overall, the morphology of the adult moth enables it to fly effectively and seek out suitable host plants for egg laying, and this contributes to its effectiveness as a pest of tomato crops. 
Tutha absoluta eggs are tiny and oval shaped, measuring about 0.5 mm in length. They are usually laid singly on the undersides of leaves, although clusters of eggs may sometimes be observed. Initially, the eggs are translucent white, but gradually turn yellowish as they mature. The egg stage typically lasts between 3 to 7 days depending on environmental conditions. Upon hatching, the larvae emerge and begin feeding on the host plant initiating their destructive life cycle. The larvae of Tuta absoluta are small caterpillars with pale yellowish green body and distinct dark spots along their back. They have a segmented body with three pairs of true legs near the head and several pairs of pro legs along the abdomen. The larvae are highly destructive pests feeding voraciously on tomato plants by burrowing into the leaves, the stems and the fruits. Their feeding activity causes extensive damage leading to reduced yields and quality of tomato crops. The larval stage typically lasts for 10 to 15 days, during which time the larvae undergo several molts before pupating and emerging as adults. The pupa of Tuta absoluta is typically enclosed within a cocoon, which is spun by the larva using silk and plant material. The pupa itself is relatively small, about 6 to 8 millimeters in length, and has a brownish coloration. Inside the pupal case, the insect undergoes metamorphosis, transforming the larval form into an adult moth. The pupal stage lasts for approximately 7 to 10 days, depending on environmental conditions such as temperature and humidity. Once development is complete, the adult moth will emerge from the pupal case, ready to mate and begin the cycle anew. So here we are briefly looking at the timelines for Tuta Absoluta life cycle and this is very important because knowing the duration of each life stage enables farmers to anticipate population peaks and implement timely interventions such as using insecticide applications, biological control measures and also helps in synchronizing cultural practices like planting and harvesting within periods of reduced pest activity which helps to optimize crop production and minimize economic losses. So we have the egg stage that will last approximately 3 to 7 days. The larval stage is about 10 to 25 days. The pupal stage will last around 5 to 12 days. And finally, we have the adult stage that will last approximately 7 to 14 days. And I also must mention that a female adult will lay approximately 260 eggs in its lifetime. So how do we get to know that the damage on our tomato crops is actually caused by Tuta absoluta larvae? On the leaves, they create characteristic mines or tunnels by burrowing into the leaf tissue, leading to extensive defoliation and reduced phot photosynthetic capacity. On the stems, the larvae burrow into the plant tissue, causing wilting, stunting, and sometimes stem breakage. However, it is on the fruits where the damage is most significant as the larvae tunnel directly into the fruits, leading to rotting, premature ripening, and deformation. This results in reduced marketability and economic losses for tomato farmers. The entry points created by the larvae provide pathways for secondary infections by bacteria, fungi, and other pathogens, further compromising the quality and the yield of the crop. When it comes to controlling tuta absoluta populations, it's very prudent that we approach this management using a method we call integrated pest management. This is essentially a holistic approach to pest management that aims to minimize the impact of pests while promoting sustainable and environmentally friendly practices. Key components of IPM or integrated pest management include monitoring and assessing pest populations, implementing preventive measures, promoting natural enemies of pests, utilizing biological controls, and employing targeted pesticide applications only when necessary and in a manner that minimizes risks to human health and the environment. So overall, IPM seeks to balance effective pest control with economic viability and environmental protection and also social responsibility.
And because here at our tiny garden, we are all about sustainable cultivation, we are going to discuss mechanical and physical control and also the biological control of tuta absoluta. So for mechanical control, we are going to discuss about tuta traps and you can manage tuta populations using these traps because they are designed to attract and capture adult moths, thereby reducing their mating activity and egg laying capacity. These traps typically consist of a sticky surface or a pheromone lure that attracts the male moths. Once the moths are attracted to the trap, they become stuck on the adhesive surface, preventing them from mating and laying eggs on tomato plants. By reducing adult population, tuta traps help to limit the number of eggs that will be laid and subsequently decrease larval infestations on tomato crops. When it comes to biological control, we have two categories. We have botanical insecticides and we also have the use of natural enemies. So starting with the botanical insecticides or what we call bioinsecticides, we have quite a number of them. We have rania, we have sabadilla, we have rotenan, and we also have pyrethrium. But for today's video, I'd really like us to focus on the oils and specifically neem oil. Neem oil controls tuta absoluta infestation by acting as a repellent, antifeedant, and growth disruptor for the larvae. It contains compounds that interfere with the insect's feeding and development, ultimately reducing its population on tomato plants. Neem oil also has antifungal properties that can help protect plants from secondary infections that have been caused by the wounds created by the larvae. If you are in Kenya and you desire to use these oils for biological control, I am going to link down company pages and websites so that you can go check them out and then you can make a decision on which biological control method suits you best. The second category of biological control is natural enemies and under natural enemies we have several enemies. The first one is predatory bugs and predatory bugs are efficient predators of tuta absoluta eggs and young larvae contributing to pest suppression in tomato crops and in this category we have macrolophus pygmaeus and we also have nisidiochoris. The next natural enemy is a parasitoid wasp. Parasitoid wasps lay their eggs inside tuta absoluta eggs leading to the death of the developing larvae thereby reducing pest populations and an example here is trichogramma species Third example of natural enemies is entomopathogenic nematodes. Now we have certain species of entomopathogenic nematodes that infect tuta absoluta larvae in the soil. These nematodes then release bacteria that kill the larvae and a very good example here that is very effective is Stenanama species that we are going to talk about more later on in the video. Next category of a natural enemy is entomopathogenic fungi. Now, these fungi infect tuta absoluta at various life stages, penetrating the pest cuticle and ultimately causing their death. And an excellent example here is Bouveria bassiana, and we also have Metahesium species. And the last category of natural enemies is generalist predators. And here we have various predators that feed on tuta absoluta at different life stages. We have the ladybugs, we have the lace wings, and we also have spiders. Let us now shift our focus on natural enemies that are highly effective against tuta absoluta and you can easily, easily get them commercially. And the first natural enemy here is Macrolophus pygmaeus. Now, this is a predatory bug that is also known as the big-eyed bug. It has been studied for many, many years and it is highly effective against tuta absoluta. So this is a picture of Macrolophus pygmaeus. This is how it looks like. It's a very small insect, typically measuring around 4 to 5 millimeters. It has a slender body with long legs and distinctive big bulging eyes, which contribute to its excellent vision. And the coloration varies, but often includes shades of green or brown, providing effective camouflage in its natural habitat. The mode of action for Macrolophus pygmaeus against tuta absoluta lies on its feeding habits. It actively searches for tuta absoluta eggs on tomato plants and inserts its needle-like mouth parts into the eggs to extract their contents, effectively killing them. By preying on tuta absoluta eggs, Macrolophus pygmaeus helps in suppressing pest populations and contributes to the natural control of infestations in tomato plants. 
Macrolophus pygmaeus also has a very good appetite for tuta absoluta larvae. It employs a piercing sucking mouth part to puncture the larvae's body and then extracts its bodily fluids, ultimately leading to the larvae's death. In terms of application, Macrolophus pygmaeus is introduced into the fields as argumentative releases to establish or boost populations of these beneficial predators. It's often done by releasing commercially available populations at recommended rates and frequencies. These releases have to be timed in order to coincide with the presence of the target pests or favorable environmental conditions. The other natural enemy that is commercially available and highly, highly effective against Tuta absoluta is a nematode. And this specifically is Tenanama capocapsi. This is generally a roundworm. It's cylindrical in body with a length typically ranging from 0.8 to 1.3 millimeters as infective juvenile. And these nematodes usually have a mutualistic relationship with certain symbiotic bacteria which lives inside their gut. And it is this bacteria that now kills the larvae once it is released in the larvae of tuta absoluta. Here we have a diagram showing the mode of action of Stenanama capocapsi and as you can see it is the juvenile stage 3 that is infective. So anytime you're buying Stenanama capocapsi for your tomato plants ensure that you're getting the juvenile stage 3. Okay, this is the most infective stage. So this will search for the insect host and it relies on chemical cues that are emitted by their prey. And then they will penetrate the insect's body through natural openings like the mouth or the spiracles or by burrowing through the cuticle. These nematodes then release the symbiotic bacteria in their gut, which multiplies and kills the insect host within 24 to 48 hours. In terms of application, Stenanama capocapsi nematodes are usually applied in a liquid suspension. It can be applied using various methods like irrigation systems, sprayers, or direct injection into the soil. Application timing is very crucial to ensure that nematodes are released when the target pests are most susceptible and active in the environment. If you desire to use these natural enemies in your tomato farms, I am going to link down the websites of these companies. I will also tag their social media pages so that you can go check them out. Remember, natural enemies are living organisms. There is no way you will find them in a shop somewhere waiting for you to buy them. You have to contact the companies because the moment you have received them, you need to release them into the environment. Otherwise, they will just die. And there you have it. Now you have more information on Tuta Absoluta, how to identify them and how to control them biologically. In the next video, we shall be taking a look at the biological control of white flies. Thank you for staying with me up to the end of this video. If you found this content to be informative, please do share it with someone who might be interested in this kind of content. And please do consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. Until the next video, happy gardening.